A pure devotee is one who has dedicated his life to the eternal service of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. He is committed to only engaging in activities that bring pleasure to the Lord. Because of his complete surrender and constant engagement in devotional service, a pure devotee's presence can purify a place of pilgrimage. He is self-realized and has a perfect perception of life in the material world, but his consciousness is always spiritual and therefore he is a pure representative or ambassador of the spiritual world. So, for him, leaving the material world is only a change of destination to carry on his eternal service to the Lord. Prabhupada had so many good qualities that there, it is said that there are 26 uh, special qualities of a devotee. And uh, Prabhupada embodied them all. So uh, I think the compassion factor was the one that really struck me the most. How he uh, selflessly tra uh, traveled the world, had a lot of inconvenience, a lot of personal inconvenience. He wasn't young. He left India at the age of 69 or 70 years. And uh, which most people are retiring at that time. And then he traveled on a boat to New York City and did it tough in New York for the first six months or a year or more. So uh, that, feeling, that, that compassion that he exhibited was very powerful. And for us Westerners to appreciate it, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't difficult to see what endeavor Prabhupada went to to, to uh, give transcendental knowledge to everyone in general and especially his disciples. That means 32 years ago in Bombay I was then doing some business. All of a certain, but perhaps on this date Sometimes between 9 or 10 December, at that time Guru Maharaj was in this pause, little, and he was staying at Jagannath Puri on the seashore. So I wrote him later, uh, My dear Master, your other disciples, Brahmachari, Sannyasi, they are rendering you direct service and I am a householder. I cannot live with you. I cannot serve you nicely. So I do not know how can I serve. Simply an idea. I was thinking of serving him. How can I serve him seriously? So the reply 
was dated 13 December 1936. In that letter he wrote, my dear Satan said, I am very glad to receive your letter. Uh, I think you should try to uh, push our movement in English. That was his writing. And that will good to you and to the people who will uh, help you. And I wish that was his instruction. And then in 1936, on the 31st December, that means just after writing this letter, a fortnight before his departure, uh, he passed her. In the Bhagavad Gita, the verse, Babusha Atmika Buddhi Rekiha Kurunandana, in connection with that verse, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur gives his commentary that we should take up the words from the spiritual master as our life and soul. We should try to carry out the instruction, the specific instruction of the spiritual master very rigidly, without caring for our personal benefit or loss. <clears throat> so, I tried a little bit in that spirit. So he has given me all facilities to serve him. Uh, things have come to this stage that in these old days I have come to your country and you are also taking this movement seriously, trying to understand it. We have got some books now. So there is little uh, foothold of this movement. Now on this occasion uh, of my spiritual master's departure, as I am trying to execute his will. Similarly, I shall also request you to execute the same order through my will. I am an old man. I can also pass away at any moment. Uh, that is nature's law. Nobody can check it. Uh, so that is not very astonishing. But my appeal to you on this auspicious day of the departure of my Guru Maharaj, that at least to some extent you have understood the essence of Krishna consciousness movement, you should try to push it on. I remember one initiation, he asked the boy, uh, what are the four principles? And he said to them, he said, are, are you going to follow them? And I mean, are you, are you, you think you'll be able to follow these for, for your life? And the boy was like, well, he wasn't sure. And then we heard under Prabhupada's breath, 
Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, He had so much faith in the holy name that these demons, you know, humans in the, in, animals in the garb of humans, by ho the holy name, they will be saved. So he had that conviction and it's contagious. We got all these things straight from Prabhupada that the Holy Name will save us. Uh, Prabhupada was, he was, again I said, kind, compassionate, uh, concerned with everyone's welfare. Even at the end he was not bothering about himself. Completely self-realized, completely detached. I was massaging Prabhupada at the, toward the end here in Vrindavan. And he seemed to be in pain. So I asked, Pra I asked him, Prabhupada, are you in pain? I was concerned if I could make him comfortable. And he looked up at me <clears throat> like, what kind, of, what kind of question is that? <laughs> and then he said, no. Mahaprabhu ki chanani chagi cha Persons who are not for spiritual realization, they may be engaged in work for eight hours only. But those who are engaged for spiritual realization, oh, they are engaged twenty-four hours. Twenty-four hours. Oh, that is the difference. And, and that difference is, you will find, that in, on the material platform, on the bodily conception of life, if you work for eight hours only, you will feel fatigued. But spiritual purpose, if you work more than twenty-four hours, unfortunately you haven't got more than twenty-four hours uh, at your disposal, uh, still you won't feel fatigued. I tell you, this is my practical experience. This is my practical experience. Uh, 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 I am here, hmm. all is working. Something reading or writing, twenty-four hours. Uh, simply when I feel uh, hungry, I take some food, and simply when I feel asleep, I go to bed. Otherwise, uh, all is I don't feel fatigued. So I take, I take pleasure in doing that. I don't feel fatigued. Uh, similarly, when uh, man will have that spiritual sense, uh, he, he won't feel rather. He will uh, uh, feel disgusted uh, to go to sleep. Uh, to go to sleep. No, uh, sleep has come. Just to this time. Uh, see, he wants to lessen the, uh, the time of sleeping. No, he left his body here, November the 14th, 1977. But the last time he left Vrindavan, he was supposed to go to New York, but in actual fact, he only got as far as back to Vedanta Manor. He got as far as London, and he was at the manor. So he, he's, his flight was, maybe it was early morning, but anyway, he was leaving Vrindavan late at night. In those days, the roads were very bad. It was at least four or five hours to get to Delhi. He was, and he was in the back of a car, and, um, Obviously, the devotees all stayed up to say goodbye to Srila Prabhupada. And as he was, as, as the car drove off, it suddenly stopped. I don't know why. Divine look. And it stopped so that I was looking at Srila Prabhupada and he was looking at me. And it was very shocking because Prabhupada was on some guest house mattress. He was on some mattresses. And he looked up at me and I looked at him and it was like, I was so shocked at how skinny and how ill he looked because I hadn't seen him for some time. At one point he used to sit under the tree and we'd all go and chant under the tree with him. But somehow I hadn't seen Prabhupada 
maybe, I don't know for how long, I can't remember, but when I saw Prabhupada, I felt, how can he leave Vrindavan in this condition, in this so ill? And I realized that Prabhupada was going off to preach. He wanted to go and visit his devotees and visit the West and preach. And I always thought that, you know, that is, that is, you know, a true warrior, a true warrior in Lord Chaitanya's army going off to preach like that. It was very touching to see Prabhupada. Vaishnav, a devotee of law, his life is dedicated for the benefit of the people. You know, most of you belong to Christian community, how Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he says that for your sinful activities, uh, he has sacrificed them. That is the determination of the devotee of the law. They don't care for personal comforts because they love Krishna or God. Therefore, they love all living entities because all living entities are in relationship with Krishna. <coughs> so, uh, similarly, uh, you should learn. This Krishna consciousness movement means to become Vaishnava and feel for the suffering humanity. So to feel for the suffering humanity, there are different angles of vision. Somebody is thinking of the suffering of the humanity from bodily conception of life. Somebody is trying to open hospital to give a relief to the disease condition. Somebody is trying to distribute food stuff in poverty stricken countries or places. These things are certainly very nice. But actual suffering of the humanity is due to Krishna, lack of Krishna consciousness. These bodily sufferings, they are temporary, neither they can be checked by the laws of nature. Suppose if you give some distribution of food stuff in some poverty stricken country, that does not mean that this health makes solution of the whole problem. The real beneficial work is to invoke every person to Krishna consciousness. As soon as he comes to Krishna consciousness, the same example as I have given several times, that a rich man's son is loitering in the street, forgetting his father's opulence and property. And somebody out of sympathy giving him some food. But other person comes to him and says, 
Oh, my dear boy, I know you. You are the son of such and such rich man. Why you are not running in the street? Come on, I shall take you to your father. So, he, that gentleman, takes that loitering boy to his father. The father is glad, and the boy inherits his father's property, and his whole problem of life becomes solved. This is a crude example. Similarly, all living entities, they are loitering within this universe in different bodies, in different planets, and some time immemorial without knowing that he belongs to the kingdom of God. He is the direct son of Krishna and God. If Krishna is the proprietor of everything and he can enjoy his father's property and these uh, problems of material condition life automatically solved. Just like if you become a rich man, if you can possess uh, millions of dollars, then your poverty is automatically solved. Similarly, if you become Krishna conscious and if you act in that way, then all other problems in the material condition of life solve. How did Srila Prabhupada accommodate so many variegated types of people from different cultures, from different places all over the world? Srila Prabhupada was fully rooted in Krishna, and he knew he was blessing us with Krishna's mercy. And he knew he was giving us the highest science. So he did it with enthusiasm, he did it with confidence, he did it with forcefulness, he, he did it with gentility. Whatever was needed for any given situation, he could see. Even there were situations he could see someone would not follow his instructions, there was an instance where two people wanted him to order that to build a temple. They were trying to get Srila Prabhupada to order them to build a temple, and he, Srila Prabhupada wouldn't do it. And later when asked, Srila Prabhupada said they wouldn't have done it. And then they would have been guilty of disobeying the order of the spiritual master. So I didn't want that, that problem for them. So I wouldn't give the order. So. Srila Prabhupada, he was expert, having been, because he was totally in touch with Krishna at all times, and he could see what was going on inside of him. Like when, for example, uh, my, I was initiated, my name is Kusha. Um, it was right after we had just finished growing Tulsi. And so I was really excited. I'm very much into plants and there was Jayashri and I were given the seeds by Govindadasi to plant and I really wanted to find out all the spiritual plants and I went to the university and I was looking for kusha grass and and I had when I had written my letter I was thinking to oh Srila Prabhupada I don't want a long name I don't want a name that doesn't sound good to the western ear I want a name that's sweet and not like gulab you know like that means rose, but to our ear, Western ear, it doesn't sound, it's gooey, it doesn't sound so nice. So I, I was being real specific about my desires. I even wanted a particular type of bead for my Japa beads, I, these certain Radunga shaped beads. And Srila Prabhupada was in India at the time, and when my name came, Kusha, I almost felt like he had x-ray vision. He saw that I was searching for Kusha. My name became Kusha. And then the beads he sent me were the exact beads I wanted. And I felt like he was seeing right through me. He understood exactly what I wanted and he knew exactly how to satisfy me on even the most mundane level. Srila Prabhupada was that. How could he deal with all of us? Because of him being in touch with Krishna, he could see each and every aspect of our being and satisfy us on a level that was safe and kept us with Krishna. He was very merciful. Chajur Vidhan
Consciousness movement, uh, although it appears a new movement in your country, but uh, it is known to the world, but nobody uh, had previously attempted to put these ideas and movement in practical shape. Uh, so that I am doing, uh, that I am attempting. And with this mission, I come to your country with the hope that the, if the American people take it very seriously, then it will be the greatest contribution to the world. Uh, so I have already published this, my magazines and my books in this connection. So if people take advantage of this movement, uh, try to understand these books, uh, they will be uh, benefited greatly. Uh, that is the basic principle of my teaching. And before going back to Hawaii, he began to speak about compassion. And when he would speak about something, you would experience it. It was like a transmission or something. And he began to speak about compassion and he began to speak about how that his eyes were closed and there were tears running down his cheeks. And he was saying, people are suffering in this world. He was expressing divine compassion for all the souls suffering in this world without Krishna consciousness. And he was saying, please go and teach them. Uh, tell them about Krishna. Tell them, give them this, this knowledge because they are suffering. They don't know they're suffering, but they are suffering. And he became in such a mood of compassion that tears were coming down his cheeks. And he was uh, just showing how much love that he had for all the jivas in this world. Prabhupada was beyond special. There, are, there aren't enough words in the English language to describe Srila Prabhupada. They don't, this, even you get thesauruses, you know, he's beyond the words. He was a Vaikuntha man. Srila Prabhupada is the most amazing personality I've ever met. I've met a lot of great and wonderful people, very famous, very unusual people, but from my first meeting in 1966 when I saw him on the street to this very moment, 
There's nobody that can replace Prabhupada as the greatest person that ever lived. By the mercy of Krishna, one gets a guru, and by the mercy of guru, one gets Krishna. So to me, Srila Prabhupada is, he's in my heart guiding me and every day, every step of the way. Srila Prabhupada has become our heartbeat and he's become our eternal guide and light. Prabhupada was a gentleman. I think that's very important, he's a perfect gentleman. He was a Vaikunta man, you know. He didn't belong in this place. He only, he came for us, to help us all. He reasons ill, who tells that Vaishnavas die when thou art still living in sound. The Vaishnavas die to live and living try to spread the holy name around. Srila Prabhupada emulated the transcendental qualities of a pure devotee. His life was the perfect example of unalloyed, loving devotional service to the Lord. And he lives on in his instructions and wherever his followers sincerely serve his mission. Mm -hmm.